Hey BookTube friends, it's Carrie. Thanks for joining me. Um, I do have a couple things to share before I get to my weekly wrap up. The first is I just want to say thank you to the other BookTubers and some of my subscribers who wished me luck on the half marathon I just did this Saturday. I did finish it and I will say that finish and that time was hard earned because it was hot and so it became an intense physical but also a mental game because at a certain point you just really get to see what you're made of so it was a great experience and I can't wait to do my next one the second thing I want to share is my coconut paperweight that I purchased from the John F Kennedy presidential library so I do not have to carve my own um, of course this is a replica of the one that he had on the Oval Office desk and it has Nauru Island commander native nose position he can pilot need small boat 11 alive Kennedy so I thought this was a pretty neat find definitely a conversation piece if you come to my house you have to talk about Kennedy I mean it's just gonna happen so I did read four books this week one was an audiobook the first one that I read though was a Hemingway that I hadn't read so a farewell to arms by Ernest Hemingway which I'm sure most of you out there have already read but uh, we follow Lieutenant Frederick Henry, who is an American ambulance driver serving on the Italian front. And I did enjoy getting to see a little bit of the Italian perspective in World War I, but the book is mostly a love story between this ambulance driver and a British nurse that he meets. And I do enjoy Hemingway's style of writing. He's very kind of short clipped tone. So I don't think it was that, but I really wasn't super convinced of this love story. I know that sounds terrible, but I, I think I may be a little jaded after watching the PBS Hemingway uh, documentary series. And I don't know, the ending just kind of <sighs> gave me that reaction. That's the actual reaction I had when I closed this book. I can understand why it is a beloved piece of American literature. I can understand its significance, but I think after knowing a little bit more about Hemingway's personal life, it has colored how I viewed his writing, particularly in this book, knowing that he had his own experience in World War I with a nurse. And also reading this book, I came across a section that discussed his love interest cutting her hair sh short and knowing that Ernest Hemingway had kind of a fascination with androgyny made it less fiction for me and maybe a little less enjoyable so I don't know I really loved the the PBS documentary series but now I think maybe I wish I didn't know as much about Hemingway if that makes any sense the second book that I read this week was The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater, and this is the first in a young adult series. I would classify this as kind of paranormal mystery fantasy. This book was super enjoyable. Uh, we follow our main character named Blue, who lives in a house full of psychics. Her mom is a psychic, and her friends there hold readings in the house. And Blue herself doesn't actually have any psychic ability, but she does have the power to intensify the psychic abilities of others when she is in the room. And so uh, Blue does kind of participate in a lot of these psychic readings. Her path will cross with a group of boys from a nearby private school. So this is where the Raven boys come into play because the Raven is actually on their sweater uh, that has the school crest on it. The main kind of ring leader of this group of boys is named Gansey and Gansey is obsessed with Welsh mythology and finding ley lines here in Virginia. Gansey and his friends will actually seek out the services of these psychics and we will see a little bit of history, a little bit of mystery, a little bit of murder. I enjoyed this book because of the characters. You really have some interesting characters and I liked the relationship between the boys. It seemed very realistic. 
and there wasn't too much romance. Sometimes YA can get a little bit corny with the romance, but there wasn't a ton of that in this book. The ending was perfect for me. It set it up for the next story, so I think I will continue this series. Um, I was very impressed with it. The third book that I read this week was 13 Doorways, Wolves Behind Them All by Laura Ruby. And this is what I would classify as a young adult paranormal historical fiction, if that is a thing. In this book, we follow Frankie, who is in an orphanage in Chicago at the start of World War II. Her father is actually alive, but her mother is dead and her father's new wife doesn't really accept Frankie or her sister Tony, and so they are left in the orphanage. We do get two different perspectives in this book. We also get the perspective of a ghost and at the beginning of the book you don't really know the nature of her existence or even her name so you will see that revealed throughout the story and you'll also see the stories of this ghost and Frankie intersect in a very interesting way. There are some very interesting ghost characters in this book in addition to one of our narrators it gives you some insight into what a German Catholic orphanage in the city of Chicago might look like in the 1930s and 1940s. And when I got to the end of this book, I actually saw that the author based a lot of the story on her mother-in-law's experiences. This is a book really about survival, about vengeance, hardship, love, friendship and I really recommend this book. I can see why this was a National Book Award finalist. Um, the two different perspectives, you will get used to that if you just stick with this. I think this one is well worth it. The last book that I read this week was Beautiful You by Chuck Palahniuk and I don't have the copy of this book, I actually loaned it to a friend already. In this book, we follow our main character, Penny Harrigan, as she is struggling to become an attorney. And she ends up crossing paths with this geek billionaire who owns uh, lots of different technology companies named C. Linus Maxwell. And Maxwell is experimenting with the creation of different personal care products, we'll say. Um, and I will say this book is extremely explicit. It's not for young readers at all. Um, but it was very bizarre, uncomfortable, unique. Um, I just couldn't stop reading it though. I wanted to see where this was going. So in the book, we do find out that Maxwell is seeming to offer this no strings attached sort of self gratification for people. But in the end, we will see the breakdown of society and we also see he has his own kind of evil agenda behind this. This book did make me think of modern society and how we are so used to instant gratification through our technology and how sometimes that can destroy and break down actual relationships that people have and I know this book is a, a bit out there for most people so I can see why it's, it's not for everyone um, but when I thought about the premise of this book and what happens in society and in relationships uh, in this book. It really makes you think about um, some modern issues that we have as well. The ending made me laugh and it made me scream no because I just did not want that mental image that the ending of this book gave me. So uh, yeah, very out there, very explicit sort of book. Um, but I have heard that this author excels at the literary gut punch and that's pretty much what this was it's very different from everything else that i've been reading but i have read two pretty bizarre books in the last few months um the other being the beauty by aliyah whiteley and now this one so uh very interesting mix i know but 
that's what I read this week. If you guys have read any of these books and have any comments, please shoot me a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, I hope everyone's having a great week and I hope you are staying cool. Um, hopefully I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys.